This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris Effects, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial and in this lesson we're heading back to the Avid Editors of Facebook page for some inspiration and what we're going to be talking about in this lesson is a situation that many editors run into and that is where they seemingly have lost clips that are in their project. They may have accidentally been deleted. Now we're not talking about media we're talking about the actual master clips. Now, whether they've been deleted or whether you're just not being able to see them, again, this is a common problem that a lot of editors run into. So in this lesson, I want to show you how you're going to be able to track down media that might appear to be missing very quickly and very easily and get it back so that you can have your project looking the way it was when you started. Now, before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well, if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro video training series on Media Composer, where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. All right, so let's command or alt and tab into Avid Media Composer. And you'll see this is the situation that I am talking about. You'll see that I have a bin. Now I've called the bin clips for the purposes of what we're doing. And it has one sequence in it. Here we go. And this is, again, some excellent footage courtesy of our friends at Artbeats. If you want to find these clips and many more great clips, you can check them out at artbeats.com. Okay. Now, where would you ever run into a situation like this where you just have a sequence that has, you know, obviously all the media still associated with it, but I can't seem to find any of the clips. I don't have any other bins, just this sequence. Well, this is a situation where potentially maybe this sequence was sent to you by an editor who's working on a different system. You're all connected to the same network and you just have the sequence, but none of the clips. Now, there's a few things that you can do to sort of orient yourself and to try to figure out, or at least start to figure out what has happened with these clips. Now, what I normally tell editors to do, the very first thing that you always need to do is to figure out what exactly is being displayed in your bin. Now, how do we go about doing that? Because most editors think, well, I know it's being displayed in my bin because I can see it, but that's not necessarily true, okay? With every bin, what you have the ability to do is at the bottom, come down to the bottom to the fast menu, and you have an option here called set bin display. Now, I'm working on the most current version of Media Composer 8.8.2, and you can see that I, my menus might look slightly different than yours if you're working on an older version of Media Composer, but this command will always be found in this fast menu. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on set bin display. Now, what this basically does is it tells Media Composer what clips you'd like to see in your project. Okay, now you'll see that I have selected subclips, sequences, effects, motion effects, groups, stereoscopic clips, and I'm also showing clips created by the user. Now, the two most important parameters in our set bin display command are not selected, which are the master clips and the linked master clips. Now, as soon as I come down and say, okay, you'll see all of those clips appear inside of my bin. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, Kev, I would never, ever, 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 ever use the set bin display command. And I'm going to show you a perfect reason to use it. Okay, let's create a title for this clip. And we're just going to call that title something like Nice Clouds. I'm just going to create a new video track. It doesn't matter which title tool we use. We'll just choose the standard title tool. And we're just going to type in nice clouds. Okay, nothing fancy. But what I'm going to do is it's actually going to be nice cludes. Okay, because I've spelt this incorrectly. We're just going to save this title. Okay, and we'll just save it to the same memo that we're working on because that's exactly what we actually want to do. And I'm going to call this nice, I'll actually spell this correctly, nice clouds. I'll say save. There's my nice clouds. Let's just drop this in. There we go. Okay. 
So now you'll notice that what's happened is, is that this title has been created in the only bin that I have open. Okay, so let's just create a new bin and for the purpose of what we're doing, we'll call this graphics. Okay, I'm just going to switch over to that other bin. I should probably move it so that I have easier access to it here. We'll just move our project up a little bit here. That's a little bit better. Okay, I'm gonna move my cloud's original graphic into that bin. Okay, I'll just stick graphics down here. Okay, now of course we realize that it's not nice clouds, it's actually nice cloud. So I'm gonna right click on this title. We're going to add edit the title. Now the only problem is that once we get in and start add editing titles, I'll not promote this to marquee, we'll call this clouds here. Okay. I always love the way it does that to me sometimes. Sometimes when I try to just select one part of the title, it selects everything. So we've changed that to be nice clouds. I'm just gonna close this and I'm going to say save. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that it's not going to save the new title into this into the graphics bin that we created. It's going to stick it back into the bin where my sequence is. Let's actually change the name of this bin to sequence. Okay. Now, to be honest, I could go through every time and move this title into the graphics folder, which, you know, I'm big on organization. But to be honest, that just becomes a bit of a pain, constantly having to do that, especially in larger projects. So what I actually like to do is just to come in because in most cases, these titles are ones that I've just updated. And this is the perfect place to use our set bin display command to come down and turn our effects off. As soon as I turn effects off, that title is going to disappear, not going to delete, just disappear. So now it'll still be in the bin. I'll still have access to it. If I need access to it, I'm actually just going to remove it from here. Okay but I won't be able to see it. So if I end up having to update this title, you know, 10, 15, 30, 50 times, I'll have all 50 instances of that title in here. And maybe I only want to clean it up at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, I'll jump in. We'll say set bin display. I'll come to my effects, turn them back on. And now I can move them all into that graphics folder and then start again from scratch on the next day. Okay. Now, this was a situation where using set bin display helped us because it actually showed us that we weren't seeing all of the clips in our project. Now, I'm about to do something that normally causes a lot of editors to have a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of panic. We're going to select everything but my timeline and I'm going to delete only the master clips. I'm not going to delete the associated media files. Okay. So once I delete those, my sequence is still here. Again, set bin display, you'll see we're showing everything. I can actually turn the effects on here and say, okay, you'll see we got nothing associated with this timeline, but we do have all of the media associated with it. So what do we do in a situation like this? Because many editors say, well, Kev, you can just match frame this clip and you could say, find it for me in the bin. The only problem is, is that Media Composer knows that that clip is now no longer in this bin. It's been removed or it's been moved somewhere else. So what do you do in this situation? What I'm going to do is say, okay, believe it or not, we're going back to set bin display to begin with. Okay. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to turn on set bin display and I'm going to use the show reference clips commands. Now you'll see that they've even given us a little bit of a prompt to tell us what this command actually does. You'll see we can select reference clips to see all of the source material related to the sequences you add to the bin. Okay, now that's important because if I switch over to a bin that doesn't have a sequence in it, nothing's going to appear. Okay, but because this bin has a sequence in it, if I say show reference clips and I say OK, you'll now see that not only do I have access to those original clips, but I also have access to that title. Okay, now of course, that does beg the question, well, what if I didn't want to have the reference clips turned on? And it also doesn't help me, you know, for clips that I may have digitized that I don't have currently in my timeline. Because remember, what we're saying is show me the clips being referenced by this timeline that's in this bin. If I got other bins that have clips in them that maybe an assistant accidentally deleted the master clips, but not the media, I'm not going to be able to get those clips back. Uh, well, I say I'm not going to, but that's actually not true. I can actually get them back. Okay. I'm going to turn off show reference clips and I'm going to say, okay, we're going to create a new bin. I'm going to call this rescued master clips. I'll put and AMA. Okay. And we're going to take this bin again, right down to the very bottom. Now this is where my good friend, the media tool comes into play. 
Okay, what we're going to do is head up to Tools. I'm going to come down to Media Tool. Okay, now again, you might find things in a slightly different place depending on the version of Media Composer you're using. So your Tools drop down organization might seem a little bit different, but the Media Tool is definitely in there. Now what we want to do is say, show me all of the media on Media One associated with this current project, but all that I want to see is the master clips and the linked master clips. So as soon as I say OK, you'll see that I actually have a few clips that appear inside of this bin, okay, or inside of the media tool, some of which were brought in today, some of which weren't brought in today. You'll see I've got some older clips in here as well. But what doing this gives me the ability to now do is to take these clips and bring them back into my bin, just like that. Now remember, if I come down here and I say show, ref or show reference clips and I say OK, it's not referencing anything because we don't have a timeline that's in this bin, so everything's just going to stay the way that it was. Okay, so let's now turn that off. Now remember, these are also clips that are physically living in my bin. They're not dis like they're not um, they're, they haven't disappeared or have been removed. So that's why uh, show reference clips doesn't do anything. So again, now all we have to do is simply come in and I could select the AA uh, own or the A099 CO27 clip and the best part is, is that at any time you could simply double click on any one of these clips to see exactly what clips they are. Now I know that this clip is one that we used. I can drag that out and I also know that if we come down a little bit further here, let me just drag this down so it's not going to impede on my source browser here that this clip, I believe, was the other one that we had used, and that was 04C043, which it definitely was. Let's drag it out of there. Let's now close that bin there. And now what's going to happen is if I come to one of these clips and I match frame it and I tell it to find the bin that it's associated with, you'll see that it immediately recognizes that that clip is now in this bin and ready to be used in any other timeline that I happen to be working on. And one last little quick tip that I do want to give you. Again, I'm just going to select these clips. I'm just going to delete the master clips because let's just say hypothetically, I only wanted to bring back the clips that were currently in this timeline. What we can do is head back to the media tool. Again, I'm just going to leave everything the way that it was. I'm going to say OK because we've got some clips in here that I don't currently have in this timeline. All I have to do is to select my sequence. I can come up to bin, I can come down to select, and I can say select just the media relatives. You'll see they immediately appear inside of the media tool selected. I can now take those, drag them to the bin, and we're now back up and running exactly the way that we were when we started. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, Use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.